谢谢大家。Kelly Curry says, my question is about playing live in the importance of staying loose, Hose. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when playing with my band, fun fact, I like it, promote the band, good job. I fail to stay loose and relaxed while playing. On those nights, I'll break a pair of sticks or two, completely drain my energy 30 minutes into a set, yeah. and just feel like I'm not playing at the top of my game, so to right. speak. And other times, I prioritize the relaxation. I'm laughing, no broken sticks, no heart attacks. My conclusion, got to be loose to be tight. What yeah. do you do to stay relaxed behind the kit, especially for those long sets? Um, that's a good question. You know, I've, I've tried, I mean, I've tried a, a number of things, and what I've kind of figured out what works for me is, you know, just hanging out. I'm usually like, you know, um, watching Barry, you know, like something on TV, um, how it's made or something, relaxing, hanging out on the bus before a show. Um, I've tried warming up, I've tried like stretching, and what I've sort of come to is, it's really, everything has to do with my mental, you know, with my psyche. So like, if I'm stressing out or I'm anxious, it doesn't matter if I'm, you know, warming up for an hour, I'm just gonna be stiff and, not relaxed and it's just gonna I'm just gonna hack away at my drums if you know I, I found that if I'm completely relaxed and I feel good and I'm playing really well I may not have warmed up at all and and could be having the best time of my life so it really is you know kind of where my my headspace is at so I just I just try to maintain relaxed um, and and not stress on anything you know and that's kind of my attitude about you know, when I'm playing drums, it's just to sort of have this stay loose, stay loose attitude. It. Anyway, we have Jessica on the phone today, who rather than me, she's going to ask the question herself. Jess, you there? Jessica, you there? I'm here. <laughs> uh, how much do we love this? Okay, Jess, where are you? In Nashville, Tennessee? Yeah, I'm in Nashville. Hi, I'm Jess. Sorry. I'm recovering from bronchitis. Oh. So my voice is like barely here. <laughs> Um, I definitely see that you have something coming up with scene four, um, and it's your art of drums where you were, um, working with him on this project. <clears throat> and I wanted to know why you have waited so long to release your art, especially being friends, um, with Brandon, who's been releasing his art, his art since 2003. And I know that you guys have been doing art for a very long time. And so, why the wait? Um, good question. You know, I, I don't really have a great answer for it other than, that, other than, you know, I've been painting and drawing all my life, and that's merely just a, an extension of, you know, my, uh, of my creative side. You know, it, again, it's just a hobby, and... Um, and so I, I've I've never I never really kind of like drumming in the in in the beginning I never planned to do anything with it I just did it because I I love to, so I've been painting yeah. all this time and just you know just recently have I, kind of, thought about doing something doing a gallery and um, scene four approached me to do the art of drums, which I thought would be a perfect opportunity for me to to begin this process of putting my artwork out there. So um, I've just sort of waited this long because I've, I kind of just don't know where to go, where to start, what to do. And I didn't yeah. really want to put too much effort into it just because we were working. I was working all the time on, on you know, in being uh, the drummer of Incubus and, and, you know, we were busy. So I, that's sort of an excuse, actually. But I'm going to start. I'm <laughs> starting now. So the art of drums is sort of the beginning, is sort of the beginning of that. You do cover songs and you do drum tutorials. Uh, first of all, tell me how you came up with this angle. Lots of people are doing covers. You're doing drum covers. It really wasn't a master plan. Like a lot of people are like commenting like, oh my God, this girl is fucking genius. But it wasn't like nothing intentional. Like I wasn't thinking, ooh, this is what I'm gonna do and um, it's gonna be great. But no, it was, you know, I love playing drums. 
I came here to follow a dream. I, you know, I didn't have a, a like a thing that I thought was going to happen. I don't know what I thought was going to happen, mm -hmm. really. You know, um, and uh, that's what happened. It was like I did everything that other drummers do. I went to auditions and I did all that. But then this video, the one with the violinist, it, that kind of blew up. And it wasn't intentional that we even made that video just to, as an audition tape for America's Got Talent. And it was, was that the, your first video cover? Um, it was the first like video <clears throat> that really hit big. And, mm -hmm. I've found from talking not only musicians like yourself, but business people and, and, and across the board, that more often than not, there was no master plan. But there must have been some voice, something out in the distance calling you that, that said, OK, this YouTube thing's happening. I love these songs. I'm just going to. I'm just going to play my, fa my favorite band song, and I'm going to record it. I can't really take credit for that. Like, there are so <clears throat> many drum covers on YouTube. People have been doing it forever, really. It's mm -hmm. not forever, because YouTube is still new. But mm -hmm. um, I saw it on YouTube, and <laughs> you know, I started doing it. And so should you, if you, if you have a talent. I feel like, you know, YouTube is still free. You can do it. No one closed it down yet. Do it now. Start, like, you know, pushing your stuff. You have a stage, and people from all over the world are going to see what you do. And if you do it good, if you love it, people are going to notice. And that's basically Did you start is. with just one camera or two cameras and just added to that? Well, or? the first videos that I made were just like, you know, with the camera in my room, mm -hmm. like the drum set next to the bed. And, yep. <laughs> uh, it, yep. It sounds terrible. It looks very, very bad. And um, so I had a few of these and then a few live ones from a tour where someone was, you know, I did a solo, like not a very complicated one or anything. Mm -hmm. but. A few of these, and I did get some subscribers, but I find that when you commit to something mm -hmm. and where, when you're consistent and uh, when you have a certain level of quality that people know that they, they can expect, then it's, that is the point where it's going to really work for you. Here's a question that came in, Maytel, that, that changing gears just a little bit, but something that really came to my mind as well. There's a guy by the name of Millie out there. He said, Maytel, do you or have you found it harder to be taken seriously as a female drummer in a predominantly male field? Speak to that, if you would. Um, you know, I think there is kind of a stigma. Like, people think that girls can't play. I do think that, per that per there's not a lot of girls playing, period. And the percentage of the guys if you look at the guys that are playing and you look at the percentage of the people that do it well, it's the same as if you look at the group of females that are playing. You know, there's just not a lot. So mostly when you see a girl play, she's probably not that good because there's not a lot. So yeah. the ones that are good are rare. So there is a stigma that they're not good, mm -hmm. which is hard to deal with. It was actually hard for me um, more mentally because you feel like you have to represent like you have that pressure like everyone thinks i'm going to like i'm going to suck right now and um it's a lot of pressure mentally but i don't know if it's actually like i think nothing can really stop you from achieving what you want so i don't think yeah that's good because you're you actually just you're doing it you know I, I you know and anyone who sees the video videos of you playing like there's no question you got the ability and it's you know you're I mean it's great it's amazing so you know just just by your actions that just speaks volumes you know Thank it's you. it's really cool to see that yeah I'm, I'm hoping that I've like managed to correct a little like people's notion about female like musicians here's a question for you Jose from Millie as well yeah, but it's something I hear, it's interesting to hear both of you speak to. It says, how would you suggest you market and promote yourself as a single drummer versus one already in a band? We've got some time off, and we're doing more things, you know, with just you. How does that work? Um, you know, that's, that's, that's a good question. That's something that I'm slowly... Probably can take a few lessons from me. Yeah, Valley I was going to say, she's <laughs> the one who probably can answer that question better than, than myself, because I'm 
you know, I'm actually just starting myself and I'm, I'm learning, you know. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I'm sort of picking your brain about it because I, I don't you know, think you need me for my help. Uh, well, you're doing it like and you've that. done an, an incredible job. So, you know, it, that's, you. you know, it's cool for me to sort of ask you questions and sort of figure out how, how can I better myself at, at doing that. And I think we have all the tools at hand. I mean, the Internet's the biggest tool we have and the easiest, the most, um, the, it's free, it's easy, and it reaches, you know, Everywhere. the world, you know, so I think that's, that's the best place for you to go, and I think probably what Maytal said is just consistency. If you can put yourself out there and do things consist consistently, slowly people will start coming to it. If you just leave it, you know, to sit by the wayside, then nothing's going to happen. It must help you, though, that you're, like, Incubus is yeah, I mean, there's no you question. You have a name for it. You <clears throat> made a name for yourself. Yeah, so. there's no question. But if I don't do anything about it, nothing's going to happen, right? If you were giving advice to somebody today that's on the fence, that's thinking about it, hasn't quite done it, what would you tell them, Jose? For someone who wants to play drums wants or Wants to play band, drum or, or wants <clears throat> to be a musician that wants to make music their life and their career. Um, <clears throat> I think... I think you need to be tenacious. I mean, I think you really need to first follow your heart. If it's something you love, do it, not because you have to, but because of the love of doing it. And um, really just follow that, whatever that may be. If that's just practicing and getting better, if that's <clears throat> answering ads in a paper, if that's making videos and putting it you know, on the internet, whatever it may, whatever it may be, just sort of go after it and be consistent and keep doing it, keep bettering yourself. Um, at whatever that thing is that you're doing. And I'd say follow your heart, you know? And that's an easy, easy thing to say because then there comes in the reality of, well, I need a paycheck. I need to pay bills. I need to take care of my family. You got to figure out how to balance all that. Everyone does. I mean, that's part of, you know, your life. You got to figure out how to balance it. And, you know, it may not happen. You know, it may not happen for you, but if you really love it, I... I can't imagine someone completely stopping doing what they love, you know? And even if it's just a hobby, still do it. Um, Louis, who is in New York City, he's, got a, he's trying to figure out how to ditch the nine to five Wall Street environment and chase your dream. Um, what would you tell him? Uh, be more available, kind of like what Jose, you need to give it a try. You need to take the risk and, you know, if you need to be a waiter to have more flexibility and you know, it's things that you have to do. Like, we all are scared to do it at some point because you're, you're really, like, that's, that's the scare. I'm not going to have the benefits. How am I going to pay, like, I'm not going to have medical insurance. I'm not, I can't do it. It's kind of like a, in, in Hebrew, there's a saying, like a, a, a gold uh, prison cell. Mm. Like, yeah. it's golden, yeah. but it's still a prison cell. Like, you yeah. need to be able to do what you love. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just start doing it. If you know, if you can't right now, then build your way into being able to do it. Save up. Do something.